Hey guys, welcome back to Benos Esther Malka's channel. If you're new here, we review games and share with you our reviews so you can make the best choices for either A, your classroom, or B, your home. Now, if you're new, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you've been here before and you have Dr. Beaker or thinking of getting Dr. Beaker, well then, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and let me know what you think. Now, just a quick overview for this video, we're going to start with an unboxing. We're gonna head over to the table to see an actual game review. And we're gonna finish with my overall opinion over this game in your classroom. So the first thing I'd like to point out is the box. We always start with box size. Uh, I think it's an average size square. I don't know what average is, but basically a lot of my squares are this size. So to me, it's average. The side of the box is relatively nice. It is a thicker game. I mean, not too thick. I, Yeah, not too thick. Uh, if you see my previous review on Azul, I believe it's the same thickness, so not too bad, right? Thumbs up if you agree. Um, and it's cute. It's got this whole story right here. So on the shelf, whether I have newer old kids, I'll kind of look at the story, kind of get the gist of the game, and we're good to go. The box insert is something I'd like to start off by showing you. So let's just check it out. For the most part, everything stays really nice and neat in here. So huge thumbs up. I've had this game for, I'll say a little bit under, maybe about a year now. Give or take a month, do it that way. Um, it's not our favorite game, so it hasn't been played often, but it's been played. So the fact that it still looks this nice and nothing really falls out on the shelf, huge, huge bonus. So every player gets a beaker as you could see by the name Dr. Beaker. And every player, we have the stirrer. And look at this, it stirs inside and it moves the beaker. So that's something I'll show you later on. So we have these stirrers. Um, these stirrers, they look a little bit glass, but they're not, they're kind of like this sturdy plastic, as you can hear. And the beaker is also a pretty sturdy material as well. So they're not flimsy and I like that. Next, we have the Dr. Beaker cards. And the cards are just a collection of patterns. That's it, they're nice. And the patterns correlate with the, the slots for the beads here, as well as the beads or marbles. I, I don't know, I mean, I call them marbles, but they're just really hard plastic balls, maybe. Let me know what you think of the name. But speaking of name, you can't leave a comment here, so if you'd like to head over to my Instagram, I love the link down below, and want to tell me what you would call these marbles or beads. And the marbles or beads, they actually fit really nicely in the insert underneath these cards, so they don't roll all over. Let's go play the game. Dr. Beaker is relatively easy to set up and that I like. Every player will get a beaker and this is made out of a nice plastic as you could see here. Every player will get two of each color marble. So that is two purple, maroon, two orange, and two yellow, green. Now you drop it in the center of the beaker along with your stirring stick and you're ready to go. For the first round, it doesn't really matter how you drop it in, just drop it in. Now something to note, Dr. Beaker is a race game. So you place the beaker <laughs> tiles or cards in the center and they say one, two, three, go. Now you flip over the tile or card and it will reveal a pattern. And in this case, it's green, purple, purple, orange, orange, green so i'm going to try to do it the best that i can on screen so just if you note a few notes you see this little circle here you can stick the stirrer and turn you can also stick it in the big ones and turn but it's a little difficult there is an opening in this part of the beaker as you could see here and that allows you to move your marbles around or they're marbles so the first thing I notice is I need an orange in the center. So we have an orange in the center. Oh no, green goes first, sorry. So we're gonna put green. Ah, it's a little difficult. You need a lot of coordination here. Green and 
as you could see here. Oh my goodness. All right. Green over there. I'll we'll put orange. So it's not that easy to do in itself. It's more difficult to do on camera. Then next we have the purple here. And then there's a space and then a green. So I'm going to move these. All right. Basically, it's not that easy to do on camera. I apologize. The camera's just getting in the way. But overall, this game is more difficult, I will admit. So I just want to give you some tips. Tip number one, when, first of all, as you can see, this is a very visual feedback game. I was basically looking at the beaker over here and I was manipulating the stirrer, manipulating the ball, the marbles, and that I could show you here. You can get a really good view over here. There we go. Better view over there. And that requires patience. So number one, this game teaches patience. Number two, it teaches planning. For example, I don't know if you saw at one point, I accidentally put in the orange first and that wouldn't do because I need the green first. So I needed to focus and plan. So a few tips. Number one, this is an overwhelming game. I'm not going to lie. Personally, I am the only one who I've ever played with that likes it. So actually no one other person. So this does require a lot of planning. This does require a lot of patience. If you have a child with difficulty in this area, ironically, this is the game to get. Now here's what I'd like you to do. Number one, split the deck into places with marbles in the center and marbles, I'll just get a few of them that are not in the center. See, like this. So you're gonna split it out. So in order to teach your child patience, I would first have them only do the cards and only focus on the center marbles. And, take it a step further, if you're working with more than one child, then I would have them take turns. So child A will do two greens, child B will do whatever's next, and so on. Let's see who's next is one orange, and so on and so forth. So you're teaching taking turns, and you're helping them plan the center. As the child gets better, then I would introduce these cards without the center. It is more complex, and ironically, you have to move some of the marbles into the center, but same thing. The child will learn, continue taking turns while they are working on creating this pattern. This pattern is not easy. And only when the child can separate the center, separate the outside, then I would mix them up and have them do both because this game does require a lot of focus. Another tip is before you start playing with the child, have them maneuver the marble. Have them just kind of take this, maneuver how it goes into the center, how it goes out, how you can turn this, how you can, let me just show you a little bit, um, actually shake it and change the order of the marbles. There's a lot of things involved here. And last but not least, if you are working with a group and they don't want to take turns, because again, four children taking turns can get a little bit, bit overwhelming, last tip is just take a uh, um, pattern, place it in the center, have everyone do it, and this is the key, discuss. Let them use their verbal skills to discuss how they came up with the pattern because I guarantee the best thing you could do for your kids is allow them to say my strategy was my strategy can change and this will lead to oh my goodness communication skills like no other what do I think of Dr. Beaker number one being I love it get it right now and in which case, if you're thinking that, there's a link below. Number two being you decide, and number three being stay away from this. I want you to actually hear everything. This is very important why I'm choosing it. I am going to give this a two. Two being you decide, and I want you to really listen closely to the pros and the cons before you make a decision and see which is right for you. So we're gonna start off with the cons, get those out of the way, and go with the pros. The cons are, as you saw, it is quite difficult to manipulate the marbles. Um, and because of that, I've had a lot of kids and adults who started to play this game with me and were like, mm, no, no, no. I, we haven't, if I was lucky, I got one card done. If I was super lucky, two cards done. 
So because it was hard to manipulate, it wasn't so successful. Now, another thing that I don't know if this is a con per se, um, but because it's so difficult, the racing aspect wasn't, or maybe that was another, just wasn't fun. Like for example, if the winner got four points and the runner up got three points, two points, one point, maybe that would have attracted people longer. But because it was so difficult to actually get to, you had that one person, I was one of them, who kept winning and winning, and then everybody else like, so frustrated, and everybody got a zero, and I kept getting the points. So I don't know if that played a role in it. Um, in terms of ages, it says eight and up. I agree with that, and I'll tell you the actual cons of this game. The main, I'm sorry, pros. <laughs> the main pro for me personally, as a teacher, I sometimes have kids who struggle with fine motor skills and giving them basic games and telling them, okay, do the peg, do the this, it's boring for them. They've been doing it for so many years and all they want is a change. So I did have to like, let's say, applaud them for only completing one or two marbles in the beginning and then waiting for three marbles and then four marbles and so on and so forth. We couldn't actually play the game, but allowing them to have a more grown up game and to really boost their self con you know, the self confidence. Another thing is because it's so difficult, there were some older children and adults who actually appreciated the game. It, I'm telling you, it was far and few in between. So, what would I suggest? If your family is good with didactic skills, if you have a child who really is bored with the pegs, is bored with the um, clips, and wants something different, I would consider this game. It's not a horrible game. It, it is fun. But on the same note, if you have a child who doesn't like racing games, or if you have a child who, let's say, struggles, or even an adult who just doesn't have the patience to sit there and move the marbles around, or this is a big one, if you have family members who don't like puzzles, definitely would not recommend this game. So again, you know your family, you've heard what I have to say. I would actually love to hear more from you guys and unfortunately YouTube does not allow comments. So if you would like to discuss in further Dr. Beaker and I'd actually be open to opening up a whole discussion on this game if you're interested, then head over to my Instagram page and leave some comments, you know, you can private message me and let's discuss Dr. Beaker. I really would like to hear more positive feedback because I see potential in this game. It didn't work in my circles, but then again, it's just my circles. It's just my family and my students. If you had a different experience, please let me know and let's see if we can bring Dr. Beaker into more homes because like I said, there is a lot of potential. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Check out my Instagram for tons more game schooling ideas and we'll see you next week with another game review. Bye.